If you look at the history of, of the United States, we're a country of pendulism. That's probably not even a word. Well, it's not a word, but we are a country that swings one way and, and then to an extreme and then shh, we swing back. I mean, I think the election of George Bush and uh, contrast that with Barack uh, Obama is a is a really good example of that. Um, I don't think without George without George Bush, if there was a more moderate Republican or a moderate president in office, I don't think Barack Obama would have gotten elected. And we have that just that tendency to just go from shift from one extreme to to, to the opposite side of the pendulum. And within our own lives, um, I think that's something that's very apparent. And um, people get hooked on something or get involved in something and, and we go, oh, I, okay, I need to do this and I need to do it with all my heart. It's kind of part of maybe the the, the work ethic or um, this this philosophy in, in America or maybe even the Western world that you can do anything if you sacrifice enough and you set your mind to it. And, you know, while in certain things that might be a good idea and a good mentality, I think it creates a lot of disharmony within. Because what ideally the spirit, the mind, the psyche needs is balance. Balance. And I think that's something that's so lacking in, in our culture. And it's something that's really not often talked about. Um, you never hear a boss, you know, when I've had jobs and the boss required intense hours, you know, that he came to me and he said, Steve, how is the balance? How's your balance? How's your life? How are all areas of your life? Are, are you are you spending enough time um, with family, um, socializing? Are you exercising? Are you eating properly? Are you, uh, how's your stress level? And it's just something that is, is crazy. You know, no, you need to sacrifice. You need to work hard. You need to go, 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 go. And then we can't understand why there's such chaos in, in, in our culture and, and within ourselves. And it's this lack of balance. And um, Eckhart Tolle talks about in one of his books, you know, someone that, that works their butt off and works real hard. I, I have... I uh, had this experience of where I just worked a lot of hours and I, I needed to uh, pay off a debt and I was just working and working and working and I was a zombie, you know, I would just come home, I, I couldn't do anything but flip on the television, I was so exhausted and it, I just sensed my whole being change, there wasn't this, this strong foundation that my spirit rested upon, it was just wiped out and the whole my whole life energy was devoted uh, towards work, and it created really a, a big, a, a big go, uh, gaping hole with it within me. And I think, man, what, what is, what cost? Yes, I might uh, earn some more money in the short term, but what's the long term cost? And going to extremes. I mean, man, I, I've been there. When we've people, you know. I've been in circles with other people that have gone to extremes. I've been in, uh, involved in going to extremes and it's kind of tends to sometimes be the nature of my personality. And it's just amazing how like a dark cloud can just overcome people and block out all other things that are important and relevant uh, in our lives. And I think a, a good example, there was a the study that said that the average parent's Talk, spends about two, two and a half minutes of quality one-on-one -on -one time talking to their children. And that's a, a really good example of the lack of balance or um, just the, the inability for us to exercise. Um, just with the chaos and the hectic uh, demands of modern and Western world, I realize it's difficult, but it's so essential. I don't think there's anything that is really more important than keeping that balance in our lives. And how do we do it? Well, we have to start saying no. We have to start saying no to the things that intrude on that balance. And we have to say no to accepting more responsibilities, say no to accepting more debts and obligations, and really work on having the, the balance in our lives. And what, what are the areas? If you think of like a scale that has maybe five or six um, platforms in which you, to, you could put all the different 
areas of your life upon, and all of those should balance out. No, one shouldn't be much stronger than the other, uh, and vice versa. If you want to achieve that level of peace, reading self-help books, reading Eckhart Tolle, spending hours uh, in meditation, and then going back into your life uh, that is completely out of whack, completely out of balance, is not the answer. I think even better than than you know worrying. A, I need to be at peace. I need to achieve enlightenment. Is just getting our lives together. Um, so and yes, they can be they can be a simultaneous action where they both kind of you're you're working on your spirit and you're working on the external things to keep your life balanced. What are the areas of balance? The areas of balance is. And I find whenever I have one of these go out of whack, I feel it. I feel it within my health. You know, either I, f I get a little bit sick or I feel exhausted or I am not at peace, not happy. And so what are those areas? The, the first one, it would be social, friends, family. Um, very important for, uh, for those of us that are not loners. Um, the second one is uh, health. And in, in nutrition and exercise, for me, that is a big one. I find I, I feel completely different when I'm not exercising, when I'm not eating healthy. Um, I can meditate all I want. I can try to be spiritual all I want. But uh, it's just not going to happen because there's this energy flowing through me that just doesn't feel right. Um, the next one is our job, career, money, finance, social stuff. Uh, not social stuff, uh, financial stuff. And... Uh, that's another one that's really probably out of balance, balance for most people because we hate our jobs or we, we're not happy or content with what we do. And when you spend so many hours in a given day at a job you don't like, it's going to take its toll no matter how much you meditate. Um, the next one is uh, education, mind, growing, uh, hobbies, taking the time to do things that we love. Uh, yeah, reading books, uh, taking classes, um, exercising our minds in something that we're, we're passionate about. Um, the other one is, I know I'm probably missing, missing a couple. Um, I don't know, you can, you can write your, the areas that you think uh, I'm missing, but I think those are, those are the major ones. Um, and, and really focusing, and actually you probably have to write it down because our, our minds deceive us. You know, we think we're doing, we're really strong in a particular area or that we're really balanced in certain areas in our life. And it really, if you start documenting how much time you spend in each area, you'll find that the, it's probably out of balance and that to move in, in that direction will create some sense of inner peace or well-being or some stability. And then uh, also getting involved, you know, people get on, you know, uh, religion, born again Christian or a weight loss regime or a new uh, eating, you know, vegetarianism or veganism or um, an exercise regimen and they get all gung ho and they go all out and it's kind of the tortoise uh, and the hare uh, metaphor that people if we would only take the slow, steady, progressive routes, because there's so many people that get involved, and myself included, in, in different things that, you know, uh, six weeks, a year, six months from now, they're completely burn themselves out and they're not going. They're not going to the gym. They're not exercising. Um, they're not, whatever it is, they're, they're not doing it anymore because they take this really hardcore, intense approach. And one, it just kind of, I think it makes people a little bit wary of you um, because people can't handle that. It's like too in your face uh, when we get so intense and then we want to convert the world and we want to help everybody. Um, and so I, I think if we just measure and pace ourselves, realizing we only have a limited amount of life energy, a limited amount of resources, and manage that properly and say, okay, you know, instead of going to the gym uh, two hours every day, I'm just going to go 20 minutes for the first couple months. Then I'm going to go 25 minutes and start ingraining that behavior within us and taking that the, the turtle approach where you end up finishing the race because you know how to pace yourself.